broadcasting from Hollywood, California. It's Grant's Rants, Hollywood Talk. We are entertained by New Jersey housewives, while Orange County limped to the end. Was Vicky the MVP after all? We weigh in on the 90 Day Fiancé couples and new scripted TV coming in 2020. That and more with Granny June and a guest co-host joins now. the ranting begin and welcome to 2020 um, we're here to record our annual new year's eve special episode we're recording this of just a few days before the ball drops but we're here to go through everything catch up it's been a minute i'm excited to be back and i'm joined and sitting across from granny june here we are another anniversary episode what was that we call oh, this oh yes hi everybody i'm back again wishing everybody a happy new year and uh, a surprise guest to balance out the conversation. Uh, my sister is joining the podcast, Alyssa, for the first time ever. Welcome to Grants Rants. Hi, thank you. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured, you know, Alyssa was expressed some interest in doing the podcast and she wanted to kind of balance the conversation, you know, and, and give her perspective. And, you know, she's not a one on one guest. You, no. you want to just kind of join it. So I'm the opposite of Grant. I don't like to talk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but you still have opinions. And we're mm-hmm. going to just wait yeah. till we get to OC. Okay. All right. Yeah. But before we get there, let's start off with something that we all watch. The Real Housewives of New Jersey um, is currently airing. And I have to say, I, well, I put it on and I think that this show is in fairly decent creative shape. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. good. Yeah, I'm entertained when it's yes. on. Yes. They had, they had quite a, 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 an array of food there for Easter. Yeah, in the most recent My episode. Yeah, good caught that. sakes. Yeah. That Danielle, she had everything catered. Oh, Dolores. Oh, Dolores. Yeah. yeah, Dolores. She had everything catered. I don't know about um, Teresa, but she had a load of food, too. Yeah. But it was kind of sad because it was. Her husband called from the IC wherever he was there. The yeah, the ICE, ICE detainment ICE, center. ICE yeah. detainment center, yeah. And um he you know, it was it was bad. The the the, the girls really felt bad that he was and uh, you know, uh, Teresa was saying later too on one of the shows I said that I saw that it was so bad in there. He saw people like committing suicide yeah. and yeah. slitting their wrists and all that stuff. That must be a hellhole. People aren't talking about it. This is a reality in the United States. Not to get wow. political, but this is the real. That's like you know as bad as it gets. Jeez. Uh, as far as you know. No wonder he. Went, he no wonder he went to Italy. I mean, who he? I'd go yeah. anywhere but to stay yeah. there. Yeah. So, in a way, I think it's important to get that out there because the the mainstream media they're yeah. not reporting what's yeah. happening in these places, and the government certainly isn't going to discuss oh, it. Oh, it's awful what yeah. what he saw and went through in that yeah. place. I can only imagine. And so, thinking of what he had mentioned and the comments he had made of what went on in there when he was on the phone in this episode, I was thinking about what like that one what five six minute phone call he had was probably the highlight of his week. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. It was sad. The, the Adriana, the younger daughter, she asked, Mommy, is Daddy getting deported? I mean, that's like really like a very serious matter. I, I, I mean, know. Especially for housewives. We're used to wine being thrown in yeah, shade yeah. and people without any money pretending they have it. Yes, and yes. Plastic surgery. Yeah. You know, but I mean, this that was pretty heavy stuff. But you know, the thing is this, you, you, you think to yourself, that really shows people you better not do anything bad because this is what can happen to you. Of course, they he's can't paid be, up the oh, you know what he you know? can't he can't be they can't be deported if they're citizens. But on the other hand, he was had so many chances to become a citizen, and 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 now he's blaming Teresa that she didn't push him enough to become a citizen. I mean, come on, it's yeah, up to no, you to do it. Yeah, you, you know. Can't do that. So I mean, he was—he's his own worst enemy, you know, his own worst enemy. So I mean, you feel bad and all that, but it's—it's it's his family that's suffering. Right. 
You know, that Adriana, the younger one, they keep, I mean, rewind the tapes. They, they've said for years, she's the baby. We're not going to, she's the young yeah, one. She's yeah. too young. She won't understand. We're not going to tell her this. When that girl gets older, she's going to rebel against her mother big time because she's going to see all this and say, you know, the mother could argue I was protecting you. You were young. Yeah. But that girl, she's not, she's not an infant. She's, what, no. like, she's I mean, like nine or something. Nine. I mean. I don't know. I'm not a parent. I don't know how young is too young, but I mean, that, that poor girl's in the dark to the point where she's asking her mother, will you tell yes. me if yeah, something that happens? Yeah. yeah. She even asked her mother, will you tell me? I mean, yes. that's, so she kind of knows what's going on. She seems like a very sweet girl, so hopefully she doesn't turn on her mother, yeah. but I could understand if she did because the girl spent her whole childhood in the dark. Yeah. I still would yeah. like to know what she where she thinks her parents went. If they won't tell her where they, where they yeah, are at, yeah. and I'm sure she can't understand what an ice facility, nor should a girl of that age, really. No. I, I just don't understand, like, what are they telling this girl? Where's dad? Yeah. Well, I think she said he was working somewhere or on vacation or something. I'm not sure what she told him. Mm. But uh, I, I saw later on that uh, they did split up. Uh, I don't think they're together anymore. Yeah, they split up recently. Yeah, yeah. it's too bad. Alyssa, I want to get your thought on this because you watch all the Housewives for the most part. Mm-hmm. The New Jersey Housewives, they taped, we just saw the Easter episode. Easter was in April of this year. That's now nine months ago. Uh, the, the OC Housewives, they recorded, like, they just wrapped, they wrapped in May. The, the reunion aired, and that was so five months ago. I think, for me, there's a time where they, they become irrelevant, when too much time passes. I mean, I think it should be a minimum of four months, and then you've got to air it, because then it becomes irrelevant. Does yeah. that, that really sticks out to me. Does, do you notice that? Yeah, no, I do. When we were watching the reunion, and they were saying, you know, all these new things that have happened since they stopped filming, it's kind of silly. Like you Kelly and OC Kelly, is engaged. Right. right. <laughs> with from a man that she wasn't with on the show. And they didn't even address what happened with the old boyfriend, the doctor, really. Yeah, they never went back and asked, like, what happened to Brian. It's just such old news that they didn't even care. Yeah. So. And, like, and New Jersey, we're watching these people eat Easter dinner when we just had Christmas dinner. Yeah. So it's like... I don't know. You know, one of them, they were celebrating Valentine's Day. And I was like, what? It was sad when Adriana was, uh, what did she say? She said, is he going to get deported? And they said, oh, maybe not. You know, there's still a chance he might not. But really, we know today that he did. So it's like Mm. sad to Mm -hmm. watch that, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's true. You know, New Jersey for me right now has a good concentration of family stories. This most recent episode of the time of recording this podcast was the Easter episode. I believe it was called like the Last Supper or whatever. Uh, and it, what, we didn't have to see them in a group yelling and drinking or no one-on-one conversations about the other. It was really just like we could see their lives, which I feel like we need a lot more of on other shows. Which And I like the group scenes a lot, but I like that New Jersey doesn't shove it down our throats. They have lives outside of each other, which is nice for a change because Beverly Hills doesn't do that. Orange County certainly doesn't do that. you know. So I, I'm enjoying that dynamic. What do you think about uh, Jennifer? Um She's become. What about her? She, she's become. I told you at the uh, last time we had a podcast together that I thought that she was going to become more and more prevalent mm-hmm. in the show. Mm-hmm. And even her husband, he's come out of the woodwork and he's entertaining mm-hmm. the guys and and you know he's he's over there with his plastic surgery party oh. and and everything. I mean, they've really come r- forward in. She's. She's really, you know, feeling her oats now. She's oh, come yeah. out, you know. Yeah. It's she, funny after watching these shows for so many years. It was like, you know, the women would come on the show and they would do it. And it wasn't a big deal. But now when these women get these contracts with Bravo and get a full-time housewife role, I mean, they really are instant overnight celebrities now. And she's really embracing that. that oh, Jennifer. yeah. Bronwyn yeah. is another one on <sighs> OC who's... Love her or hate her. She definitely feels like she hit the mm-hmm. jackpot. But it's funny, like, in the past, I feel like it was, like, a kind of, like, a gig that people would get. Now, it launches these people and their family businesses. Yeah, and it's know. a big deal. Yeah. Jennifer is still obnoxious. I enjoy her on the show. I think you've got to have her. 
Um, I she, like her more this season than yeah. last season. Yeah. Sure. She seems yeah. a little more real this season and not as obnoxious and like trying too yeah. hard. Yeah. yeah. Jennifer, you need to go back to China and get some more furniture because there's some wide <laughs> shots <laughs> and your house is so cavernous. And yeah. Open, there's not a stick of furniture and you're looking at like she's in the kitchen and there's like a football field of hallway <laughs> behind her. I mean, not even lit. You know, you've got to figure out, you got to fill the space. You, you want the big the, house, you got to fill it up. Do you see the, the, the big room she has, though, for the kids? When they mm. go over there, they have a ball. Mm. She, has basketball big, she has this yeah. big, big room downstairs with all kind of toys and stuff that they can do. And she, she really goes all out, you know, for the you kids. You know she loves showing that off on the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've teased this for a while, but I, I've turned Granny on to 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. And I don't believe we've really talked about it too much on this show. Oh. And so Alyssa has also got into 90 Day Fiance. She's seen it in the past in bits and pieces, but now... For many of us, it's appointment TV. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to talk about a couple, just three. We're just going to go through yeah. three. Yeah. Because they, they're throwing too many couples at us oh, right God, now. Oh, God, yeah. This current season, I believe it's season seven, is, you know, it's not as loud as they usually are. Uh, usually I feel like there's a lot more going on. You know, it's, there's always like a couple standout couples. This one, I don't feel like they have... Like, if would do we all do we have a favorite standout couple this season? Not really. Well, um, no. I mean, because uh, I narrowed it down to these three, and now I regret not putting Angela and Michael on there. But there's really not much to say about them other than Angela's still yeah trashy. Can I say that? <laughs> oh God, Angela, she's such trash. Angela and Michael. The oh, one in Nigeria. Yeah. Oh, Michael. yeah, yeah. So I want to talk oh, about... Oh, yeah, Angela. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so let's talk about Robert and Annie. Yeah. He's 41. She's 31. Mm-hmm. He's got the five-year-old son. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he's he, got... He, he's, he's whistling Dixie with her. Yeah. <laughs> he has little he's... money, five kids with four mothers. Yeah. Crazy. There's a lot going on. She wants to go to the clubs, doesn't she? And and and, mm-hmm. and, and see the strip clubs. And, and he's looking for somebody to take care of his, his son. Uh, and, and, and you know, she's not the type. She mm-hmm. she wants to have fun. She wants to have yeah. a threesome, and she wants to go to the strip clubs. <laughs> I mean, she's just out for herself, and she's, she thinks she's something important. I mean, oh, she yeah. oh, she wants the best of everything. Yeah. She, you know. Yeah. Well, oh. they're, they're the reason why I wanted to watch this season, because I heard they there was a couple from Winter Park, Florida, which is oh. where I live. So I got really excited. Um, but Winter Park's actually known as like a nice area, but of course where this guy lives is like bordering a not so great area. So it doesn't look as nice on TV, but, um, yeah, yeah, he's, he's an Uber driver and she thought she was getting like, she was going to Miami beach with some rich guy. I think that's what she thought she was getting. She does talk a lot about Miami. And he let her on, and the other flip side, too. He let her on telling her that I'm going to buy you all these clothes. Yeah. Don't bring your wardrobe here because you're going to get everything new. Yeah. She didn't know she should be sharing a bed with a five-year-old or however yeah. old he yeah. is. I couldn't believe that. The I, three of them in that one bed, yeah, he's I know. kicking them. Not for an hour could I do that. Oh, no, God. You know, no way. No, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, she, she kind of expects a lot, but she went to the wrong guy if she expects that because mm-hmm. he can't give her what she wants. Yeah. So. She's been presenting a lot of red flags to Robert. You know, like you mentioned, the threesome. Yeah. She, you know, she's been with the woman. Like, uh, I, yeah. I don't know why that would be such, uh, you know, like that's her past. When you get with somebody, you have to accept their past. You know what I mean? Like, but if that's what she wants in the future, then I can understand yeah, that that's not yeah. going to happen. I'm because... surprised she didn't get along with the porn star grandmother better. If that's what she's into. Yeah, right. right. That that porn star grandmother, some people love to hate on her, but you know what? She asked, she asked the right questions. Yeah. And I think that was all producer prompted by like, ask her if she's on birth control. Just ask, just ask. Yeah. Of course, it was going to piss her off. But I think, you know, that's an appropriate question to ask. I mean, the man has how many kids? Again, I just said it. Five kids with four mothers. So, I mean, you know, I asking if she's using protection. I thought he only had that one protection. kid, Bry- Bryson. No, five. Oh, he has others? Yes. Oh, he's got a nerve even looking for somebody. I know. He's weird. I like to impersonate him. What can I say that he says? Oh, God. And he wants to go out to strip clubs, and I just want to stay home with Bryson. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. all he wants to do. Yeah, yeah. But that girl, she's out for a good time, and she's not yeah. going to get it. First of all, you know, she, she, she wants to, like Lisa said, Miami. 
I, I don't know. I don't live in Orlando, but I assume like it's a different scene. Way different. Like what Way are the different. like? I know you've never been to the strip clubs because you told me in, in Orlando, but they're not yeah. exactly like big no. everybody says orlando strip clubs are like terrible and you know if you're gonna go to a strip club you have to at least go to tampa or something so even i know uh, that. she's definitely in the <laughs> wrong place <laughs> i want to tr- any final thoughts on those two fools well i don't think it's gonna last me neither i don't think it's they're gonna, not I mean, a match. unless he unless he really really sucks it up you know and puts up with all her foolishness and she's not going to change. No. So I, I don't think... I, mm-hmm. what do Neither you of think? them seem happy. happy. No, I don't think so. All he tells her every day is how ungrateful she is. And they <laughs> fight in front of all these people <laughs> yes. in public. Like, that's not going to last. They no. don't seem happy with each other. And if no. you're not happy when you're borderline engaged, yeah. forget no, it. I'll forget that. No, yeah. this, this next couple, Juliana and Michael, there's this whole thing with this prenuptial mm-hmm. agreement. Oh, I, I, I think we can say that it was very poorly explained to this girl. She doesn't understand yeah. anything as it is. Well, I mean, it, I I can't understand him. He, It's like he's going out with a child. Yeah. It is. And I think that's what he likes. You this know, is weird. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I mean, she's pretty. She's She's got a nice figure. I don't know how much she's got upstairs. But I mean, you Bob know, sponge he's, anybody. <laughs> he's he's got to explain everything to her mm-hmm. as though she were a child. Yeah. But I think underneath, she's a little bit smarter than she pretends mm. to be because when he mentioned the prenup, she pretended she didn't know what it was. But he noticed she didn't want it, and he said, mm. "Okay, then I won't do it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Is he stupid true. or what? Mm-hmm. You, Alyssa, you had mentioned to me there was some comment that he made early on in the early episodes, like that he was, he wanted to like, what was it? I that... think it was the comment when he when they first um, introduced Juliana to us, and he went to was it like her hotel? Yeah, in Brazil. Yeah, and and he said something like, "Oh, you're when you're not with me, you're just a poor Brazilian girl, but when you're with me, you're you know." You, wealthy oh. or something like that and we <sighs> my boyfriend and i got a kick out of that we said oh he loves having that power yeah you know yeah well you know what he doesn't have any power to do is dress himself he's and got the worst wardrobe and of, what is he wearing and, and nothing know. fits i think he must have money because he comes from greenwich is it well, greenwich. greenwich yeah greenwich. he claims uh, to have money but you know what is this thing with the ex-wife that she's got to give all her opinions on everything and telling this girl, I don't want you parenting my kids. Mm. Well, what does she want her to do? I know. I kind of don't blame her, though. I wouldn't want that that young girl parenting my kids. <laughs> uh, Juliana, she doesn't know anything. And every, she says it all the time. I don't understand. I don't know. I don't I know. know. Yeah. I know there's like a language barrier and she's not from here, but like, the girl was like, I'm a loser, I am ter- I don't know anything, I can't make any money. Like, it was just to the point where I was like, I, I, are we in on a joke, or are you really just, like, completely helpless? Because it's kind of sad to see someone come to this country and just, like, have to be, like, told where to go, how to sit, what to do. Well, and, like, she's... that lawyer tried to help her out, and the guy, the Michael... Did such a poor job explaining anything to oh, her. He, the poor yeah. girl. Someone needs he's, to like he, be he her. He looks like he's her. got a stick up his. his I butt. know. I say that every yeah. time. He looks so uncomfortable. Yeah, he always yeah. looks as though he's ready to let out gas yeah. or something. You know. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a real prick. You know, that's what he is. Yeah. He's a real nerd. That's what yeah. you know. He's a he's a he's a uh, uh, whatever you call it from where he comes from. He's one of those. But yeah. I love his kids, though. I have to yeah. say, his yeah. kids are very well spoken and they yeah. seem mature, and I they love, love her. They love Juliana. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. She doesn't trust anyone, which you know I can't. I mean, there's been stuff that has come out about her past that she's been, you know forced to work and things like that and I, I don't want to get into all the specifics well, she, so she says she wants to be independent she doesn't want to have to rely on him and so she's going to try to get back into modeling so how far she'll yeah. get with that who knows all I could think of when, when they were at that rock climbing wall which was such a stunt because none of neither of them did it no. but you know, he he said, "Oh, I'm not. We're not going to do the prenup." And then I I just looked at her and I said, "Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching." Yeah. She got what she wanted out of that. That's think. what I'm saying. Ultimately, she's not that dumb. Yeah, ultimately, you know, yeah. you know, she's 23. If she does eight to ten years with him, she's still in her early 30s and can have a whole new life. 
So, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying to, like, use the guy, but, I mean, if that's the plan, she's still so young where I wouldn't be surprised. You ever notice that all these foreign girls are very, very demanding, though? Mm-hmm. They all expect to get a lot. From the men. Oh, yeah. When they come to America, they oh. think they've just hit the jackpot. And they yeah. have these high expectations. That's it. Well, on the flip side of that, Tanya and Sinjin. Now, Tanya's from the United States, and she is demanding and expecting everything Ugh. and wanting everything to fall into place despite having nothing to offer. Yeah, she leaves this guy in that shed. Oh. I mean, the poor guy comes over here. I know. And he's got the whole damn shed to, 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 to build. For those who don't know... These two, they live in a shed somewhere in Connecticut. But now, the you know, the American girl, she's leaving the country to go to Costa Rica for 30 out of the 90 days to become a witch doctor. Yeah. And now she's she's leaving the guy who knows nobody, has no friends or family here, to, to be with, by her the, to, with her mom. And the poor guy can't even make himself a drink. He doesn't have any money because he can't get a job because of the visa. Yeah. So the poor guy can't even make himself a drink. The, the mother's like, you can't drink I my stuff. I feel so bad for him. And I give him a lot of credit for putting up with what he's been putting, what he had to put up with. He's going to probably get a lot of Jack Daniels for Christmas because, or he probably did. Because, yeah. yeah. You know what, too? Uh, I mean, she makes him feel guilty when he talks to her on the phone. She makes him feel guilty for not, for, for, for you know, mm-hmm. having her away. Yeah. I mean, oh, oh, you know, you just keep busy. You, you know, do what you have to do there. He's, he's cutting the grass. He's, he's doing all this stuff. And she can't find any time to talk to him. Uh, yeah. I feel so bad for him. I mean, she really did yeah. turn, threw the rug out up from under him. Yeah. You know? And she has these friends at the, wherever she is in Costa Rica that only know half the story. They only need to wear bras. <laughs> there was a lot going on, but um, she like I was shocked because like you know the she she's just giving them one side of the story, so they think yeah. that he's the bad guy in the yeah. situation. Yeah. But as the viewer, I think the the public opinion is that Tanya is irresponsible she and is. foolish Very for what she's so. doing. I, I mean, she told him, "Oh yeah, the shed's all ready for you." And he walked in, and the whole place they couldn't even sleep in there. I know it was a I, mess. What and a, so she used him. To, she got yeah. him here, yeah, making him think he's gonna live in the mother's gonna let them live in her yeah. shed, and he's got to build it first <sighs> before he can live in it. Yeah. And she said, "Oh, she just she lied, and she told him that it was ready, and yeah. it wasn't." And then she said, "Oh, I've been meaning to." do this take this course for so long but i kept putting it off okay so you put it off for now like the worst time possible yeah i know i don't understand what would why are the other times were so much more you know not appropriate yeah. than this one when you have literally a counting clock of 90 days well, if that's any uh indication of what kind of a person she is he ought to run. Well, the internet thinks she's nuts. The internet does not care for her. This can't be good on her. Like, just this whole show. I think he can do better. He seems very yeah. intelligent, and he seems like he has a great attitude about life, yeah. and I think he could do so much better. Well, she oh, went on yeah. Instagram, and she, she blamed editing because people thought that she was too flirty with the salsa dancer, and she didn't, you know, that she wasn't engaged enough when she was away. She blamed editing. I don't know. I mean, you know, everyone blames that. And Michael from Juliet and Michael blamed editing, saying that it made it look like he wasn't helpful enough to Juliana. I don't. I don't know. We definitely know that these these shows are, you know, produced and edited, and uh, they have to accept whatever goes out there. But this Tanya, I mean, you know, she can blame editing all she wants. I don't think that she's ready for this relationship. No, she's not even ready to live in a shed. <laughs> <laughs> stuck with that mother i feel bad oh that doesn't seem very nice when we come back we're going to be discussing briefly the end of real housewives of orange county season 14 and then i want to take a look at um what's coming out on tv in 2020 and then we're going to have a little bonus topic at the end that i'm sure will create a stir and a rant stick with us now this you're listening to Grant's Rants. Subscribe and spread the word. There are a lot more rants to come. Listen anytime on all major podcasting platforms. And now, back to the show. 
and we're back on the podcast sitting across from Granny June and my sister Alyssa and I'm excited to talk about Real Housewives of Orange County genuinely uh, because I watched the reunion I watched almost all of it back to back Um, I'll keep it brief but hey it was a Vicky takeover she came in she sat in that main seat I think they all look absolutely ridiculous considering that she wasn't even full time but yet it was all about Vicky in my opinion she had a lot to say and you know production must hate her because she definitely behaved like an animal I don't agree with all of it but look what they did was very disrespectful Alyssa what do you think I agree. I am team Vicky all day, every day. I always have been. I just find her to be the most authentic. And I think that the show is really nothing without her. Because a lot of the the things that happened this season involved her. Most of the reunion was about her and her bringing it. Like, it was just... I mean, she was in the front seat of the reunion. Like, she wasn't even full time and she bumped Shannon out of the way. Like, you know, that, that just goes to show, like, their whole plan backfired. But... You know, we definitely will probably have an unpopular opinion for some listeners because I'm leaving. I'm not leaving Granny out of the conversation, but Granny does not watch OC Housewives. But you know who Vicky. But is, she doesn't right? like the Vicky. Dimples. Yeah, I know Vicky. Yeah. She is not a fan. So I'm. You're probably gonna. Rep, you'd be more like fine if they kicked her off TV. <laughs> I don't look at it, so yeah. I don't care yeah. whether they I keep just, her or not. I know? love how she just says, she just speaks her truth, and she just says whatever she wants, and she doesn't really, you know, yeah. worry about what people think. What I don't like is that she says, this is my show, this is my show. I mean, I, it's an ensemble show, I've said this forever, I don't like when other housewives say it, but she does have a point to, you know, flex her muscle and say, hey, I, I've been here from the beginning, uh, and that's... You know, I think she's entitled to that. And, you know, the man reading the cards over there and Bravo, uh, uh, Andy Cohen, um, you know, they really were put in their place by Vicky. And I think it was rightfully done. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So let's get into a few things. Tamara, very disappointed in, in, all, in everyone involved. Not even, I can't even blame Andy, although he should have been asking follow-up questions. But the women on the couch, at least in the edit we saw, they did not hold Tamara accountable the way they should have. Uh, I don't know what was happening. She made comments about the Trace Amigas themselves individually, and no one said, like, what do you mean by that? Like, she totally got by, in my opinion, completely clean. How does this continue to happen on the show? Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're, like, afraid to start another feud with her, so they just, like, don't address things, or... Well, then that's when Andy needs to step in and, yeah. you know, get to the bottom of some of this stuff. Because, you know, I don't mind Tamara, but she's a, she's a master at this. And she's been for 12 years. She's a master at it. And she needs to be able to, you know, speak on what she's said and done. Um, Gina, Gina, we learned more about the husband's arrest details. She has a new man. Do we need more of Gina? I'd be okay if we did not see Gina. I actually don't mind Gina. I actually really like her after this current season. I think she actually she has a good storyline now. But we, I'm not invested in her because we never saw the husband that she's been in these fights and arguments and now a divorce with. So I don't care about her life because I haven't seen it. Yeah, I guess we had we've never seen the the husband. Yeah, I don't know why they put her on the show if they couldn't show. The, the sh- these housewives are supposed to be about these women's lives. If she can't show the husband, then why is she on the show? I, she should have never been cast. Um, I just, I mean, it doesn't mean I hate her, and she just should have never been cast. Emily, now Shane appeared. Mm-hmm. Shane makes you very nervous. I hate Shane with a passion. Granny, this is this, this woman's husband, and he's like half her size. He's like a little dork, and he is just like a mean little thing. You know, he just... He's not supportive of her. You can tell he's very insecure. So anytime she'll try to express any emotion to him or, you know, tell him a concern she has about their marriage, he just will laugh at her or, like, try to make, like, a really bad joke. And he... It's, like, just... Ugh. He's... Ugh. He makes my skin crawl. I hate him. At the end of the day, when the husband was on, we, we... Basically, it was determined that nobody really knows the real version of Emily... And because there's two different sides to her and we didn't see any of it. And I completely blame production for this. This show it has, has been lousy. They have not shown the family life and the life of these women. All it is is one-on-one conversations over lunch, drinks, and dinner to talk about Kelly Dodd or another housewife. It has nothing to do with what's going on in their life. That is very poor production quality. But of course, it's being produced by the same people who do the worst show, 
Beverly Hills. So why am I even surprised? But I mean, you know, this woman's been on the show now for two seasons, almost 50 episodes, and we still don't know who she is. So that's on production. I'm really, really pissed at them. And I feel like Emily should probably get another shot because they haven't done anything with her. Bronwyn, the newest one. She, um, I thought she really worked in the beginning. Don't really love her right now. Vicky wants to elevate the cast, which doesn't include her. I loved when Vicky said that at the reunion. They they caught her in her dressing room, and she was saying, this, this cast is a mess. And I was like, I agree. I agree. If they don't bring her back next season, I might not watch. This whole show is a mess. It's it, It's been a rough season. It's been a series of rough, rough seasons on this show. It hasn't really been gripping since the Brooke days, Brooks days. Um, not that I want to go back to that, but, um, I mean, obviously Kelly, I enjoy her, but this show needs a lot of creative work. I don't even know where to even begin with this show. It's not as bad as Beverly Hills, I will say, but they've got a lot of planning to do and they need to add more of these women's personal lives into the story. I mean, you know, it's, it's, they, they set them up like they're looking for furniture but then they're just having a conversation about another one of the housewives. Mm-hmm. So they're really not living their lives on camera. And, um, you know, Andy Cohen's out there saying that season 15 is going to have the best casting. And Bronwyn has a lot going on. Oh, no, I'm really not watching. I don't care about her or her mother or her husband and his necklaces. Like, I don't care. I, yeah, I'm glad that OC is going away for a while. I, I need a minute. And they have a lot of, lot of work to do. I have zero faith that they're going to really shake the show up the way they should. And that's my final thought on OC. So nice. from here, we can move on to other TV talk. 2020 is going to bring a lot of TV shows, whether we want them or not, to every streaming platform. There's new one, There's new streaming platforms that aren't even out yet. I mean, it's just too much. They said there's something like 400 or 600 shows. I don't know if that's an... I don't know how accurate that is, but I mean, there's too much to keep track of. Yeah. I don't want to watch that much TV, and I really love television. So let's take a look. The Hollywood Reporter put out an article, the 20 most anticipated new scripted TV shows in 2020. So let's start with you, Granny. What do you, what do you, uh, caught your attention? I mean, there's so much. Well, I... I... I think I don't get HBO, but uh, people that do might be interested in Your Honor. Uh, that has Brian Cranston in it, who was very good in Breaking Bad, and uh, he's uh, his son gets involved in a hit and run. He's a he's a big lawyer, and uh, it leads to a lot of um, lies and deceit, and to get his son out of this problem. So. It might be interesting. I would I would look at it mostly because of the actor Brian Cranston. Yeah. I think he's good. And then there's another one, but a lot of them are on F- FX or Hulu, and you know. Uh, but Mrs. America, I I would look at that. What's that on? That's on FX or uh, Hulu. So, oh, FX or Hulu? Yeah. Yeah, now they're everywhere. Yeah. But Can't this has up. Rose Byrne in it. Uh, I like her. She was a, she was a very good act. She's a very good actress. Um, and and this is um about uh this Phyllis Schlafly, who was a real person. Uh, Kate Blanchett plays her, and I like Kate Blanchett too. It's nine episodes, and it's about this Phyllis Sch- Schlafly who is a conservative lawyer, and she campaigned against the Equal Rights Amendment. So she made a lot of, a lot of, uh, got a lot of prominence for doing that. That's another one. And of course, Schitt's Creek is coming back. Of course, yeah. a lot of people like that. Is I, that finishing out Schitt's Creek? Is that almost, I thought I heard that was the end. It might be. It comes, it comes back January 7th. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's on you know, Hulu. There's so much like this, something has to really like wow me. Yeah, for me, to watch me too. Right now and have to really pique my interest. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of nonsense like the Saved by the Bell is coming back. I mean, who asked for that? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But that's my opinion. I mean, I looked over. I I I don't know. It was like 50 shows that were going to come back yeah. in the TV guide. And I really didn't see any that appealed to me that much yeah. that I would say, oh, geez, I've got to see that, you know. 
Yeah, Alyssa, I'm going to ask you now, what what series has stuck out to you? Well, when I was reading this article that you sent me of all the um, the shows, uh, like you guys, most of them really don't appeal to me because I'm kind of picky with shows and, you know, I don't really have a lot of time to watch TV. But um, this one I saw, it's called Space Force on Netflix. Immediately mm-hmm. by the title, I was like, no, thank you. I'm not into anything that sounds like that. But <laughs> when I was reading about it, it says it's... um. Greg Daniels from The Office and Steve Carell. It's actually a comedy. And I'm still confused on what exactly it's about. But, like, honestly, I love The Office so much. And Steve Carell that I... And it's a comedy. Like, Is, that, is it sold. animated? I, I think I saw oh, that. Oh, is it? Was oh, I'm not sure. The description is really difficult to understand. It just says it's a comedy. Um, it's inspired by President Trump's idea for a space force as the sixth branch of the military. I don't know anything about that, but, mm. you know, if it's a comedy and it's, it's know, a good combination of people creatively. So maybe it'll yeah, be Yeah, like I'll give it, I'll give it a chance. Yeah. 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 So the choice that I made here, and this could go either way. So this show called Hollywood is coming out on Netflix May 1st. Ryan Murphy is the producer of it. He did that politician show. I still don't understand the appeal of the politician. I know people loved it. I had no interest in it. But I imagine this will be some full Sunset Boulevard takeover with a bunch of billboards all over again. Hollywood is the first. It's, um, basically, it says here, according to the Hollywood Reporter, the series will examine Hollywood in the sex industry and how, in his words, everything has changed and nothing has changed, according to Ryan Murphy. The series is considered to be a love letter to the golden age of Tinseltown. And uh, Darren Chris stars and will executive produce the limited series. I like a limited series because it's straight to the point. I will say Ryan Murphy does do a pretty good job with some of them. So we'll have to see how that goes. And Darren Chris is a great actor. So um, that, one, that, one too. that one sounds like a good one. There's yeah. another one coming out too. Little Fires Everywhere. Oh, from that novel? And uh, yeah, it's got Reese Witherspoon and Kerry Washington as two mothers who come into a seemingly perfect town and shake it up. So that might be interesting. Mm, that sounds mm. good. I love Reese Witherspoon. So uh, yeah, yeah, I do too. Well, now let's transition to uh, an advice segment. We do this all the time. Uh, at the, in this episode, where Granny gives advice to various celebrities. But first, let's turn our attention to Mama June. Did you see this? There's a story now where Mama June apparently uh, trashed a Georgia hotel room, a thousand dollars worth of damages. Look at this. But the bed is stripped down. There's um, a mirror hanging on the wall that's all smashed, trash on the floor, and apparently there was a bloody handprint <gasps> on one of the walls. Oh, my God. Oh, God. It looks like a decent hotel, too. doesn't look well, like Well, I mean, you know what? Trash leaves trash. That's what it's all yeah. about. They said there were shards of paper everywhere. Is that from, like, drug paraphernalia? Right. I don't even know. Like, how well, does that I, evidently, they were both out of their heads when that happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She she sold her house for $100,000. They got an RV, and then they've been living out of casinos, according to this article on the Daily Mail. So wow. things are not good for her at all. Um, how but, are they not in jail? She yet. lost all that weight. She lost her mind. Well, she also, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, she's uh, she's arrested for crack. She was arrested for crack cocaine oh. earlier in 2019. So she's had a bad year, this one. But I think it's all brought on, on it by herself. Oh, God. What happened to um, with the, the daughter there? Boo-boo. Whatever. She's living with her 19-year-old sister, Honey Boo-boo. She's not. Oh, God. Another disaster waiting to happen. And she's on that show. She's We TV's Mama June from Hot to Not, and it said that producers are scrambling to get her help because they still want to keep using her for the TV show. I mean, at what point? Like we like we saw Lindsay Lohan be uninsurable. I mean, at what point is it is too much of a risk to have a show? Jeez, she's not well. Is this the mother? The mother. Oh God. Oh, God. Yeah. This, they're past that. That ship has sailed. I yeah, mean. how far do they have to let it go before they do anything? Oh, I mean, oh. that's 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 definitely trash. Yeah. I mean, trashy. They, they trash leaves trash. That's what they did. Gross. Oh God. Do you have anything that you could possibly tell Mama June to give her a good year? 
Well, she's got to really straighten up and fly right or she's going to go right down the tubes. I mean, to trash a, a hotel room like that, you got to either be on something or you got to be completely nuts. So she better straighten herself out fast. But I don't know if she will. I don't know yeah, if don't, that will I ever happen. I think ending. she's so far down that she she lost weight. She lost her mind. So, you know, yeah. that's what happens. You know, Teresa Giudice, she blew off her kids for Christmas when they went off to Italy because she was seen walking around with the guy who put in her pool. Is that it? So she's now with this new guy. I'm going to tell her, don't get into any commitments if you want to be with somebody, you know, be with them. But do not commit yourself. She's in so much debt anyway. She's got to. She in, claims she isn't. Well, she I paid, she paid big, big bucks to have all these papers sent through for stop him from being deported, and every one of those cost thousands. Mm -hmm. So, if it, you know, if she wants to get involved with the pool guy, just don't get underwater. That's all I can say. <laughs> I agree. Last, well, not lastly, next, Dolores Catania. She's, uh, you know. Oh, good Dolores. What are you going to say to her? Uh, I know you love that doctor, whatever his name is. David. David. Yeah. But uh, I have a feeling like your ex-husband that he's not going to make any commitments to you. You think he will, and I hope that he will, but he's very, very evasive. And your husband is building him in this beautiful home, and... I hope you get there to, you know, get in the home and have him committed to you. But to me, he doesn't seem as though he's going to. So I would be very, very cautious. And lastly, to bring it back to Michael, Angela and Michael of 90 Day Fiance. Oh, he's in Nigeria. We just saw on the show. He was denied the visa. This obviously I'm gonna didn't tell go over him, well. I'm going to tell Michael he's very, very lucky that he got denied the visa <laughs> because he's better <laughs> off over there. If he comes over here, he's coming into a hornet's nest with her. She's got all these kids and grandkids. He's not going to be any better off. He's, he's going to be much better off staying in Nigeria. Please, Michael, don't come here. Yeah. You'll, you'll be in big, big, deep trouble. That's my advice. Solid advice. Before we go, I want to give people a little bit of update. Granny, around your writing, because we've talked about books on this podcast in the past. What are you working on currently? Well, I'm now I'm working on another book. It's a, it's about the family, the Harringtons, and it's a fiction. And it's all about how things were back in the 50s and 60s with these people that were in their own little inner circle, and they thought they were a little bit better than most people, and they had to follow all these traditions, and people had to live up to what they thought they should be. And it was kind of a false, you know, th thing. Mm -hmm. But they swore by it and felt as though they had to follow all these traditions or they wouldn't fit in. And it, it, so I'm trying to tell the story about how this one girl, her life is so screwed up because she's been following these traditions and what happens to her and her children when they because of having to live the way they live it, mm -hmm. it looks good on the outside but the things that happen on the inside are really yeah. eye-opening yeah so like, that's what i'm writing about now like keeping up with like the joneses like society yeah yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. rules these arbitrary oh, rules yeah. we have to live by. everything that she has to do and so, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite, quite an interesting thing. I'm doing a lot of research to make it authentic. That's great. That's great. So Linda. I don't know if I'll ever finish it, but I'm trying. Yeah, well, you will. I mean, the you third finished book the is still being worked on, edited. Yeah. And um, that, should be, that should be published. i I, I got to publish that this year. I'm not waiting any longer. I, as you should. I've been promoting that all along. Yeah. yeah. So good for you. Alyssa's heading back to Florida. Alyssa, thanks for doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. It's funny to have you on, Grant. I Smith. never thought I would do this. Because you really listen to it. the show. You actually, you say I do. It. I listen to every episode. I'm definitely more of a listener than a talker, but I figured I would do something a little different. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you did yeah, well, like too. Very well. Yeah. 
Thank you, everyone, for listening. I love you for still hanging out with me. There's more to come. And I hope you all have a great New Year's. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Happy New Year. This has been Grant's Rants. Support the Rants on Patreon at patreon.com slash Grant's Rants. Follow Grant on Twitter and Instagram at It's Grant's Rants. Cover art created by Howie Rone. Voice over by Aw oh Yeah! Original theme music by Alexander Arntzen. The Grant Michael Collection.